Hi everyone, it's Christy from Green Eye Tarot. Today we're getting dark. I know it's only September, but I'm one of those people that really looks forward to the fall months and the winter months. I'm probably in the minority in that I'm not a big summer person. I've talked a little bit about how I like suffer in the heat, like the humidity, especially as I get older, it's becoming more difficult to deal with the um, humid temperatures. So I tend to um, get more energetic and come alive more in the fall and the winter months, which seems counterintuitive to the idea that as we move into the darker half of the year and towards the winter, right? You feel like it's almost like a slowing down. So while I do slow down, I also, um, I just get this burst of energy and, um, in particular, a drive to want to connect to, um, a little bit of a darker inner, like turning inwards, like, um, what I like to call the descent, right? The descent into the darkness. Now, technically the dark half of the year doesn't really start until Halloween. So we're, I'm definitely ahead of the game, but I'm really feeling this energy, like it's coming. Like I feel this ramping up towards um, connecting with this idea of a descent, right? A descent into the darkness and as something that is welcoming, right? Not something that I fear. It's not something scary. It's something that I actually look forward to every year. So I thought I would come on and do a video um, called uh, Decks for the Descent. And I think um, there was a video that was done maybe last year about Decks for Descent. I think um, people in our tarot community had filmed something like that. I'm just gonna hashtag this, hashtag Decks for the descent and then anyone who wants to join in feel free these are decks like i said that um really support me in this turning inwards in this descent into this darker half of the year and um into my journey of introspection that i get just a little bit deeper and this time of year always makes me feel um like I'm so looking forward to the darkness, if that makes sense. Like again, not scary, not something to fear, something to embrace the descent. So I'm gonna share some decks that I pulled out that are going to be my, my companions as I, uh, as I descend right into this darkness. So I'm gonna share some decks and then I'm also gonna share some books um, a few of them are beautiful, these beautiful books that are putting me in this mood as well. So this is not necessarily about Halloween or Samhain or these are not like Halloween decks. This is decks for this descent into the darkness. So let's um, just jump right in and I'm just going to start sharing some decks. I'm going to put some tarot and oracle decks together uh, that I think kind of, you know, go well, you know, go well together and then kind of talk about how I use them together. Um, and some I'll just kind of show on their own, but, um, let's jump right in with the deck. So my first deck for the descent, um, is probably no surprise to anyone, but this is the darkness of light tarot. Um, this is a deck that always comes out, but I feel like all year long I use this deck, but, um, this is definitely one of those decks that is a constant companion for this type of work. And I don't want to use the word shadow work and I'm not going to because any deck could be a deck that assists you in shadow work because it depends on what shadows you're exploring. I mean, shadow has to do with our unconscious, our subconscious, and that could be any deck that you connect with for that work. So these are not, I'm not going to really talk about shadow work. Um, this is more of a, just a descent into my own um, introspection into this darkness, um, this darkness that's filled with so many things um, and so many different uh, areas to explore. And I like to think of it as like a cave, right? With different caverns that lead to different places and take you to different places. And that's that's really the energy I'm I'm connecting with when I'm talking about these decks. So the darkness of light, I mean, it has the word darkness in it, so it kind of makes sense. Um, I talked about this deck at length for, um, on the video I did about uh, ancestor work and tarot. So this is still a very big part of that work, but this is also just a constant companion for me as I look 
towards the darker half of the year and look forward to doing this descent right into this darkness. So this is, like I said, the darkness of light. Man, is this just a amazing all around deck. Um, it's definitely um, a Rider Waite Smith clone, but man, this is just, this is a powerhouse in my tarot library. This is a powerhouse um, and one that I, you know, I use quite frequently, um, but definitely a constant companion um, and the perfect deck for a descent, um, a deck for descent. And another um, deck that I use kind of alongside this a lot, again, it was one that I used a lot with ancestor work and that's the Beloved Dead Oracle. So I know that one of the things that we, um, that, I say we as just a collective that I that I that I've heard and just over the years that I've um I've been in tune with is you know the fact that um some people believe the um right the veil is thinning at the time around Samhain it's a time to connect a good time to connect with ancestors for me it's always a good time to connect with ancestors I don't think ancestor work has to be limited to one time of year or a season. This is something that's ongoing for me um, and I'm sure is for a lot of people, but these two decks in particular were ones that I used um, a lot, you know, on my journey with um, tarot and ancestor work and connecting with ancestors. Um, so the Beloved Dead just feels like, again, it feels like this dive into, um, and I don't want to say darkness again, not darkness as a, um, as a negative, but darkness as a place to explore, right? This very exploratory energy of darkness. That's the darkness I'm tapping into. And, um, and these two decks just help to, um, you know, if you think about again, companions on your journey into this descent for me, it would definitely be me connecting to ancestors, whether they're blood ancestors or ancestors of place or ancestors of time, depending on where I'm going in this darkness, um, right? So I love this. Look at the queen of pentacles and this witch from the beloved dead. These just, God, their color palettes are so good, but just the energy and the way that I use them to connect with ancestors has just been amazing. So these two, definitely wanted to show these two together. So again, the darkness of light, tarot, and the beloved dead oracle. So the beloved dead is definitely mass market. Darkness of light is an indie deck. I'm not even sure what edition we're on now for the darkness of light. I believe I have the fourth edition here um, that has the black borders and the linen cardstock. So it's amazing. It's amazing cardstock, but all right. So those are the first two. So let's see what's next. So let's do another sort of little pair here. So another deck that, um, again, is a deck that I, I, I associate with this sort of descent into this darker half is the Ritual Tarot. This is the Marked Edition by Tierra May. So some of you may know that um, Tierra May just recently had a Kickstarter for an Oracle deck, the Cave of Sybil Oracle. Um, which is quite a bit, I think, darker than this. But um, again, the Cave of Sybil, so um, uh, relating to this cave energy. So this is how I really view this deck as well. To me, this deck gives me feelings of like going deep into a cave and coming upon, again, different like caverns with different artifacts in them. This is a deck that connects me to myth, right, to exploring myth. Um, and exploring archetypes within different myths. So to me, like I said, this feels like a a, a deep dive into a cave um, where I will find all sorts, like I said, of different artifacts that will help me in my journey, you know, this descent into the darkness. So this is the Ritual Tarot. I think it's one of the most brilliant collage decks um, that has been produced. I mean, it is so, you know, it is so well done. You can see the amount of work that has gone into it. Um, but this is a great deck for connecting with the darkness. Now, one of the um, oracles that I've been using alongside of this, and just a great all around oracle that I've been loving is the Abaton Keys Oracle. So this deck is um, 
related to dream work um, and Greek mythology as well. So this is, um, is directly related to sort of the realm of dreams. And so for this deck, uh, this I feel like is such a great, a great, um, uh, a great deck for thinking about the descent into darkness as like the descent into our dreams, right? Our dreams are often connected to our subconscious and our unconscious mind and things like that. So to me, this isn't a great, a great deck to use for this sort of darker time and this introspective and this diving into this, right? This cave energy, sort of a cave of dreams. And I don't know about you, but just next to each other, these decks to me are, um, are amazing, uh, next to each other. So to me, they, they pair really well aesthetically, um, but also just energetically. So this has been, um, an amazing, an amazing pairing as well. Um, the Abaton Keys is such a great Oracle deck. Um, I, I can't, I can't speak highly. I can't speak more highly of it. Um, it's not one that I see a lot, I don't think, but it is a great, it is a great, great Oracle deck. Um, and like I said, if, if you just can't see from me laying them down next to each other, uh, yeah, the Ritual Tarot and the Abaton Keys are amazing together. And, um, and such a good, such a good pairing, like I said, as um, for this sort of journey, this journey, this descent into, like I said, we have dreams, um, we have sort of this cave. I like to think of it as sort of like a cave of dreams when I'm using these together. Um, the Abaton Keys has a great, um, it has like a title and a keyword, so it gives you a lot. You don't really need the guidebook. The guidebook is very interesting. It's a very interesting um a very interesting read to go along with the the deck but you don't need it because you get a keyword and you get um you get a title and a keyword so just like i said what an amazing what an amazing pairing um and and like i said abaton keys is such a great deck so if you haven't seen it or you know definitely check it out because it is really it works with so many decks it doesn't have to just be used with the ritual tarot it to me it, they go well they go well together but it does work with so many different decks and just as a standalone oracle a hundred percent so that was the ritual tarot and the abaton keys so let's see let's do another little pairing let's do um this is the antique anatomy tarot so this is by claire goodchild um a very very popular, um, very popular deck. You know, I've seen this um, around on so many different channels in so many different ways. Um, such a unique uh, concept for a deck, um, I think, 100%. Um, but it is, um, it has that very Victorian feel, right? Um, very Victorian medical, right? Medical field, um, anatomy, um, and things like that, but paired with these, um, these beautiful flowers and these botanicals and things. Um, so it's just, it's a great deck. Again, if we think about the darkness, not just because it's bones, but sort of like if we think about the descent into darkness and when we see skeletons and bones, that's sort of the bear, right? That's, that's, um, a human body laid bare, right? With nothing, nothing. It's just the bones, right? So I think of that again, like kind of digging down into the foundation, right? Right down into your bones. So for me, it, it connects really well to this descent type of energy into darkness. So alongside that, we have the Memento Mori Oracle, which is also by Claire Goodchild. So obviously it's a great pairing. Memento Mori is Oh, I can't talk enough about this. I have the Folklore Magic expansion. So it's a very, very, very chunky, very big deck. But the Memento Mori Oracle, again, what a great deck for ancestor, you know, for ancestor um, connections. Again, another way that I use this, but also just for exploring those darker recesses of our minds and um, things that we may have hidden in our subconscious, you know, mind. Um, so obviously they pair beautifully together because they're both by Claire Goodchild. So they have the same artistic 
energy. But Memento Mori Oracle, like I said, is what a powerhouse Oracle deck. Like so many cards, so many ways to explore, to explore this deck. Um, in loving memory. So here we have a wreath. And um, what I love about it is that you can take this deck and really, um, while it comes with like some keyword like definitions, this deck is such a great intuitive reader to just, what's your first instinct? Like, what do you think this is trying to tell you? What is your intuition telling you? So it's a great, again, a great for connecting to your own like inner intuition and that introspection again diving deep into this descent right into this darkness into this void you know that is and that is you um and again the just the bones such a it's such a great analogy to to think of it for myself just to think of it as like digging deep and getting to the bare right to the bare bones of it you know the re the very foundation in your bones um so yeah so i think um, these two obviously pair so well together, but the Memento Mori is such a good powerhouse Oracle deck. Um, and, and just if we think about death as darkness and those connections that we can make between death and darkness, but then also a return to the light and a rebirth. So for me, it's, it's such a great, um, it's such a great way to look at returning, right? Because when you make the descent into the darkness, you're always going to return. Um, and you return, you know, with so many lessons and so many gifts and so many um, just different connections that you've made while you're in the darkness. So for me, this is a reminder that there will be a return to the light and that you're bringing so much with you when you do return. So that's the antique anatomy and the Memento Mori Oracle, two just fabulous decks by Claire Goodchild, perfect for this descent into, into the darkness. So let's see, what do I have next? So the next deck I have is the, this is fairly new to my collection. This is the Tarot Obscura. Can we talk about the backs? They're this beautiful green color, which I'm not sure I've ever seen on a deck. Um, and then they're edged in this matte black. They're just beautiful. They're matte cardstock. Man, do I love this deck. Am I loving this deck? Um, it is, and I say this in the most positive, like most um, complimentary way. It is so weird, um, but it is so weird in all of such good ways and ways that I connect with. Um, it just, it remind again, this reminds me of diving into my subconscious, my unconscious mind, whatever you want to call it, just the things that are just going on in there. I often feel like, like if people were to like get into my head, they'd be like, what in the heck is happening? Like, where am I? How did I stumble into this weird like world? And that's what it feels like. It feels like being inside my head. Um, just this great world where like I fit in um and and um all of my like weird like thoughts and like things and like the things about me that make me who I am like are perfectly accepted I don't know how to describe it I don't know if I'm describing this right but man this deck is so good um I absolutely love it I think it's um it's just so unique and I'm so excited to have it and I'm so glad that it came when it did so that I can it can be a um it can feel like a friendly companion as I descend right make this descent into the the darker half of the year and into my own um, reflections and things like that. And, and diving into my shadows, like I said, not talking about shadow work, but just acknowledging the shadows and what, and shining light right onto those shadows. So this just is perfect for this. And again, can't talk about how excited I can't say enough about how excited I am to have this right now. Um, just feels like that perfect, like I said, that perfect, um, support as I, as I do this descent right into the, into the darkness. Um, and I kind of ramp up for this, this energy. Uh, it really is. It's just, it's so weird and like just a little bit creepy in the best way possible. 
So this is the Tarot Obscura. And can we talk about the gold? Like I love the gold foiling on the on the uh on the card titles. Like look at how they flash. Like it's there it's just so well done. The matte card stock, it's it's really nice and I the color palette, right, is giving off those sort of darkness, like dark feelings. Um but without being it's not like depressing. It's not it's to me, it's just, it's, there's like this joy in the creepiness. There's like joy in this, in, in this creepiness. And, and I love it. I think it's amazing. So this is, again, the, um, the Tarot Obscura. Uh, so one of the decks that I've been pairing with it a little bit and just sort of kind of seeing how they, they speak to each other, um, is the Oracle of Echoes by Anatorian. So um, this deck to me is another one of those like great for this descent into, into darkness, um, an exploration of the more shadowy side, sort of that, again, subconscious, unconscious mind. Um, it's just, it's a great, again, a great all around deck. Um, it's confronting, you know, without being, to me, it's very confronting without being like, um, activating. Um, so it's also gentle in a way. Um, but I really like the way these two are speaking to each other. Um, it almost feels like in this world of the tarot obscura is like, we're already in this very eccentric, like weird, like very otherworldly feeling place. And then I feel like the, the Oracle of Echoes is like that, this, the people who are in this world, this Tarot Obscura world, the Oracle of Echoes is like their subconscious. I don't know. I don't think I'm making any sense, but it just feels like these people, like this is their, this is their dive into their subconscious. So like, I'm kind of personifying obviously this a little bit, but I tend to do that with my decks and personifying like, this world that we're tapping into with the tarot obscure, but it just feels like, like that, like this is like his subconscious thoughts and the Oracle of echoes, right. Is mirroring, right. This is his a reflection of the energy in this deck. So I don't know how, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm literally just sharing my thoughts. So they probably make no sense, but you know, it is what it is. It's okay. It all makes sense to me, which is what's important, right? As I use these cards to to support me on this journey, but I just think these two again are it's a good it's a good match. It's um yeah, it's both decks are like I said are kind of confronting, but I don't find it scary. Um and I don't find it activating in any way. I just um I just think it's it's a good it's a good match for this descent, right? This this these decks for descent. I think these these are really good together. Okay, so that's the Oracle of Echoes by like I said by Anna Torian. Um and then uh Tarot Obscura. Amazing. It's an amazing deck. I am so thrilled about that one. So what do I have? Okay, so I have two more. I have two more decks. Um, again, decks for Descent, it's always going to include the Somnia Tarot. Um, it's, again, this is one of those decks that I use all the time. It's like the, the Darkness of Light Tarot. I feel like I'm constantly reaching for this deck for so many different reasons. But again, if we think about how this deck was created and the creator um, creator's experience with sleep paralysis. Uh, so... Um, again, sort of that realm of, um, it feels like very, uh, it feels very connected to dreams, even though it's tied to this sleep paralysis, you know, but we think about nightmares, we think about things like terror, like night terrors, anything um, connected to sleep that is related to anxiety or fear or like paralysis, right? Just being paralyzed by fear. Um, the fact that this is photography based, I just think it's brilliant. I'm like I said, I'm always going to, you know, have this deck out because I think it's just a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant deck. Um, 
and it almost feels like I lost my light somehow. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. Now it's like a little shiny, but I feel like I lost my light a little bit. As I'm talking about darkness, I lost some of my light, see? So definitely the energy is ramping up. It doesn't matter if it's still 80 degrees here. We're ramping up for this darkness. Love this star card. Ugh. This like looks like where I live because this was filmed. This was photographed where I live right now. And this just with the snow, it reminds me um, so much of different places I've been. Um, but this deck is, uh, is amazing for diving into the subconscious, the unconscious mind, connecting with those shadows, connecting with the darkness. Um, yeah. Again, it feels like, it feels like having a companion on, you know, on this, this descent into the dark. Um, and I've been finding that the Abaton keys works really well with this deck. Um, so that's been nice, like a nice pairing with this page. Um, but I feel like I did a deep dive of this deck because it's amazing and I'm in love with it. So you can find that on my channel. I definitely did a deep dive. Um, and I feel like this deck has been seen a lot, but it is amazing. It's an amazing deck. There is an illustrated edition but I do not have that one just because I'm so in love with this one. So I don't have that edition, but there is an illustrated edition of the Somnia Tarot. All right, what do I have left? I think I just have a few more. So I have here, um, this is the Tarot of the Huntress. So this is a, also a newer deck, but one that is brilliant, was brilliantly created by Kara Small, who is a part of our tarot community um and a, a beautiful and wonderful and amazing creator and they created this deck as a way to honor and tap into the energy of artemis uh so while not n not necessarily connected to the darkness this is um i think connects me to sort of that wild place right so this is more like entering a dark forest um, that type of energy, the, the energy of entering that dark forest and, and, and seeing how changed we become when we get out the other side. Um, so that's always sort of a, that's another type of energy that I feel like I connect with around this time of year. And also when I'm thinking about this descent into darkness. So yeah, this is a gorgeous, it was, so, it's so well done. It's a gorgeous deck. It is obviously um, using uh, art that was, you know, already created. This is art that is in the public domain, uh, but just so well done. And what a great, again, a great companion for this descent into into this darker half. Again, like like entering this dark wood. Um, and just thinking about the archetypes and the f like fairy tales and myths we've heard and just this 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 idea of entering the wood and coming out changed right coming out when we when we emerge from this dark woods like what are you know what have what lessons right what have we seen what have we found out about ourselves so this is definitely the um, descent into that that dark forest energy um, while we're tapping into and connecting to Artemis um, who is a moon goddess. So, you know, we think of the moon like shining through the trees of a dark forest, you know, there's always that light. The moon is always your companion. So it's just gorgeous. So that's Tarot of the Huntress. And let's see. So I have two more Oracle decks for decks for descent, and then I'm going to share some books. So another deck that I use, I'm use, I've used this alongside a few decks, the Antique Anatomy. I've used this alongside Darkness of Light. This is the um, Earth and Bone. Yes, the Earth and Bone Oracle by Syrian Shadow. I always get this confused with his other deck, but look at this. Look at this color. Oh my gosh. So this is... I think a brilliant Oracle deck, mass market. It has a title. It has several keywords, very easy to use without a guidebook. Again, it, there's bones, right? Earth and bone Oracle. So we see skeletons, we see bones. So again, it, it ties to that 
connect that connection to like the bear, the bear, right? The laid being laid bare, getting to the foundation, right down to the bones. Um, so this is a great, like I said, to me, this is a great Oracle. Um, this is one of those that, uh, connects to that more shadowy side. It has a shadowy feeling. It, it gives that, you know, things kind of like lurking in the shadows. Um, it also kind of gives off forest type energy. Um, it's very, it's very earthy, hence the name earth and bone. Duh. So yeah, this is a good one. This is a really good one for pairing. Again, it pairs with a lot of decks that I have. Uh, also, again, a great standalone, but this is a great Oracle for this. Um, if you're thinking about decks for Descent, this is a great one that I have in my library. And this is by Syrian Shadow again. This is a rock pool deck, I believe. So pretty readily available. It's mass market. The last deck I have, I think. Oh no, I'm sorry. I have two more. I have way too many decks going on here. There's just piles of decks everywhere. And I was smarter this time by taking everything out of the box and their boxes and their packaging so that you didn't have to sit here and, and listen to me or watch me do that. So I was trying to save time, but I have decks everywhere. So this deck is, this little tiny little cute Oracle deck is the Morgan Oracle cards. This is by Morpheus Ravenna and Hannah Storyteller. Um, so this is a little tiny deck and here's the backs. It's the Morgan Oracle. So this deck is obviously connecting to the energy of the Morgan as a goddess, as a deity. And just that energy. So the warrior, the queen, right? The seer. Um, we can think of so many different um, uh, ways and archetypes that the Morrigan shows up and the ways to connect to. But this is a great, great little oracle deck. Um, again, for this sort of darker time of year, it's definitely like a little bit more, um, more um, confronting and, um, but it's a great way to connect with the Morrigan if that's something that, you know, you want to do, if you're looking to do that. This is a great little deck. It's, I guess it's like maybe poker size, bridge size. It's, it's, it's definitely on the smaller side, but, uh, to me, this is, this is a great, this is a great Oracle, um, to connect again to that energy and, if we think about sort of the darker parts of ourselves that can be um, sometimes like we feel like the darker parts of ourselves are um, if we listen to people like it just in our like all the people that are surrounding us and just in society in general, you know, that like sort of want us to deny sort of the darker parts of ourselves. And this deck is the opposite. This is, you know, to me, this is the energy of connecting to those darker parts because they're all incorporated and integrated into us. And so we have to have the light and the dark and the, and the, and the shadow, right, is so important. And so see, like here we have the outcast, like so, so often I feel like I could feel like an outcast for the way certain, certain ways that I embrace so parts of my shadow and see them for what they are and see them as positives, right? And see them as things that help us to grow and help us to learn and help us to embrace our most authentic selves. So that's what this deck kind of does for me. And so it's such an important part of that descent, right? The descent into connecting with all those good, juicy parts of your shadow and, um, and integrating them into yourself um, as, as, as authentic as you possibly can. So that's the Morrigan Oracle cards. So that's um, a great little, a great little Oracle deck. So the last deck that I have is, um, is the Tattered Wilds Oracle. And I cannot for the life of me remember which edition this is. So I'm so sorry, but this is the Tattered Wilds Oracle. This is um, a lot, pretty large. It's like a an Oracle size deck. Um, this deck is beautiful for this type of descent. It has no keywords. So this is all intuition. Um, this is all really diving into what you see um, and connecting with it on just a 
intuitive level, on an emotional level. Um, so to me, this is, again, it reminds me of like kind of going into the cave. Um, this pairs really well with the ritual tarot as well. But to me, this is like, again, like kind of going into a cave. It almost reminds me of like cave drawings. Like if you went into a cave and you saw drawings on the wall and like you were trying to figure out what they were trying to tell you, that's what this reminds me of. So again, very like cave imagery. That's what's that's what this deck makes me think of. So it makes me think of me trying to decipher, right? Something that's just visual. Um, and if we think about the way like thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago this is how people communicated it's how they told stories it's how they recorded their own histories um and and so that's what it makes me think of it makes me think of cave drawings and me trying to just figure out what the messages are so this is a great deck for that for embracing that intuitive knowledge right the, th the that intuitive wisdom that we have and tapping into that energy so this is the Tattered Wild. And again, like I said, I am I cannot remember what, there's a few editions of this and I'm like so sorry that I can't remember. But one of the things that came that I, I won this deck in a giveaway, which I'm so thankful for. Um, and along with the, the deck, I won this ginormous, um, I guess you could call it like a workbook uh, journal slash journal. It is very big. I'm trying to like fit it in the frame. But it is, um, it is definitely uh, a, something that you can use to tap into. I feel like it would be a good tool for things like shadow work or what you would consider shadow work. Um, and like, like here it says, the devil, risky and dangerous, only looking out for itself, easy way, the regretful choice. Um, and there's lots of prompts in here. Um, that help you connect to the cards, to connect with the work that you're doing. Um, so this is a, um, it's, it's a wonderful tool. I um, go through some of the prompts in a separate book because I won't write in this because I'm like weird like that, right? I have that like, like I don't want to write in this. Also the pages are like shiny, like shiny pages. So I don't know like what pens, like I feel like if I write on this, it's going to smear. I don't know. I have this again. This is my own thing, but, um, but there's lots of like prompts and activities to go through in this workbook, um, that go along, like I said, with the deck, with the, um, the Tattered Wilds deck. So it's amazing. Like I said, there's so much space in here for, um, for working through different things. So this is like, and I believe this is one of, so this is one of the cards and it says mantra. I am a child of the moon. So here's like a mantra. There's a meditation that you can do that relates to the moon. Um, here it says, write the Cliff Notes version of your story with woman number one. Allow every emotion to surface as you scribble words or memories down. It does not need to be in any certain order. Just get out what wants to come up. Um, so there's all different, like I said, prompts for journaling. This says, let it go. Sometimes an anchor becomes a chain and the water is rising. You can no longer afford to give so much of you. And so this is like writing your zodiac signs for your houses. It says, you are here, literally the center of the universe. So it's, it is really well done. Um, and there's just so much in here. What was your favorite color? What was your favorite game? What did you play outside? What would you spend hours doing? Did you laugh a lot? So now we're like connecting to our inner child. Did you believe in fairies? Did you have an imaginary friend? It's absolutely amazing, this book. Um, and it is just, it's just tremendous. And like I said, I won this in a giveaway. I won the card, the cards. And um, the, so I won the deck and, the, and this workbook slash journal um, in a giveaway. This is by Naya House. Um, and it's just, like I said, I love the fact that it doesn't have keywords because it's, it's really, you're really tapping into that intuition. Um, and so, and it's the perfect, this is a perfect tool for that descent into the darkness, 100%. What a good, you know, it's just such a, an amazing tool. All right, so now I'm gonna share a couple of books and try not to make this video extremely, extremely long, um, which is like literally impossible for me, but I'm gonna share a couple of books um, that are also companions for me on this um, sort of descent into darkness. So now um, here's some books. So this is a twofer. So these are two books by Courtney Weber, 
who um, is just an authority on on certain deities and connecting with goddess energy. Um, these are amazing. The Morrigan is, um, this to me is the best book um, I've ever encountered on the Morrigan, Celtic Goddess of Magic and Might. Um, I've read this entire book. Uh, it is amazing. And then we have Hakate, Goddess of Witches. So I am um, working my way through this um, through this book. So um, I was up to the part that says finding yourself in Hakate, which is, um, again, there's lots of prompts, meditations and things like that, different prayers, spells to connect to the different, the many faces, right? She's a triple goddess Hakate, so the different faces. Um, so these two are fabulous for connecting to darker goddess energy, if that's something you're looking for, and, and this descent into darkness, again, as guides, as supports, as um, as just uh, deities that you can connect with like around this time and this, this descent, the Morgan and Hakate. These are two fabulous books by Courtney Weber. I highly suggest them. So the next is going along with my theme of Claire Goodchild's amazing work. And so this is Claire Goodchild's The Book of Ancestors. I think I talked about this book in my video on tarot and ancestor work. This is a guide to magic rituals and your family history. Um, and Claire Goodchild has done so much of her own work um, and is, we are so, I feel so privileged that she shares, um, that she has shared this with all of us so that we are able to connect to our ancestors. So again, I've been working my way through this book. Um, I started an ancestor journal. So I've been using tarot and this book and a journal to work to work my way through um, this book of ancestors. So this is a candle ritual. Um, so there's so much in here about connecting, about starting the, about starting the journal, about who do you want to, you know, why do you want, really thinking about why do you want to connect with them? What kind of um, ancestor archetypes, you know, can you connect to? Um, so it's fabulous. It is a fabulous book so far. I look forward to working through the rest of it. Um, but this is an amazing book for connecting to ancestors for this descent into this darker half, um, this connecting with ancestors and, um, and the darkness. This is an amazing book. So this is the book of ancestors. Obviously, it's like a trifecta for me, the antique anatomy, the memento mori, and this. Okay, so now we get into some absolutely gorgeous books that are helping me to connect with my darker side, my darker energy, right? Being positive about the darkness. So this is The League of Lady Poisoners. And I want to say that my partner bought this for me. And I'm not sure what that says about me and about what he thinks of me and about how he might be a little scared of me because this is illustrated true stories of dangerous women. Now it could just be because he knows I love beautiful books and books that are aesthetically pleasing. If we can just look at the green edges of this book, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this is the League of Lazy Poisoners. Lady, lazy, lady poisoners, not lazy. That would be me, lazy poisoners but lady poisoners. Welcome at tonight's dinner party. You'll be joined by distinguished guests from around the world. These unforgettable ladies have helped make femme fatales the sinister tropes they are today. And what brings them all together is their weapon of choice, poison. This lavishly illustrated book by Lisa Perrin introduces more than 25 infamous women poisoners exploring the circumstances and skill sets that led them to lives of crime. Amazing. Uh, Look at the, oh my gosh, look at the end papers. So again, it's aesthetically, it's a beautiful book. But also, can we just talk about, you know what I mean? The subject matter, it's amazing. So I've dived into this a little bit and I look forward to continuing my dive into this. Um, but to me, this is the perfect, one of the most perfect um, ways to dive into this time of year. And again, getting in touch with my a little bit of my darker side, right? I'm not poisoning anybody, but it's nice to to read about maybe why. Why did they do this, right? Um, and, and understanding what some of their um, motivations were. Um, it says, poisoning goes back as far as politics goes back. Poison penetrates power. So I think some of the stories that we're going to encounter in here, you know, we're going to see that they may have been justified just a little bit. 
there may have been some sort of justification for this. Um, but it is truly a gorgeous book. Um, money poisons you when you've got it and starves you when you haven't. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to diving into this more. Um, but it is gorgeously illustrated and the stories I've read so far are intriguing and inviting and just makes you want to cozy up in a dark little corner, right? With a hot little beverage that isn't poisoned and just read about some of these, like they said, femme fatales. Okay, the next book, another amazingly gorgeous volume that I got last year, and this is The Field Guide to Witches. And I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can get more of it in the frame. The Field Guide to Witches, an artist's grimoire of 20 witches and their worlds. And if you can see by the cover of this book, you will see that it, the cover was illustrated by Abigail Larson, who did the Darkwood Tarot. Again, look at the end papers on this book. So she um, designed the cover and I believe she contributed as well to some of the artwork inside. So if we can just enjoy and just take in the beauty that is this book. The papers are so nice. So here we have an introduction, how to use it, which locations, and then fairy tale witches, goddess and guardians, hags, crones, and monsters. And then we have downloadable resources, which I love a good resource list. So we have a lot of familiar ones, La Bafana, Baba Yaga, the Snow Queen, Morgan Le Fay. We have Circe, the Morrigan, Hecate, the Kaliak. We have so many um, amazing witches in here. And each witch was, has, was illustrated by a different artist. So I think that's amazing. Um, so it's a collaborative work. So here we have fairy tale witches. So I won't show you, you know, everything, but here's the Baba Yaga. And so it talks about the research and rumors about Baba Yaga, the location of where this sort of myth comes from. And then here we have the artist notes, which I think are absolutely amazing, that point out the skeletal legs, the mortar and pestle, animal companions. How does this relate to her mythology and folklore? Um, and even location. So we have sort of the different pieces. And then here we have studying the witch. So this is the artist's um, study. So as the artist was creating their illustration um, and it goes on and then we get a rough sketch and then we see the final piece of art. So this is the Baba Yaga. Again, I think this book is absolutely amazing. Um, and I love the fact that it is um, a collaboration. It is a collaborative work. Um, and it's this, so, um, like I said, Abigail Larson did La Bafana. So she's, um, the illustrator of the Darkwood Tarot. I believe she did the Horror Tarot, Tarot as well. So anyone who loves the Darkwood Tarot, um, I think will, will love this book. Anyone who loves witches, who loves folklore, who loves mythology, um, I think this will be, um, a book that you would really love. And so this is the Field Guide to Witches an artist's grimoire of 20 witches and their world's amazing. Perfect for this descent into darkness. Okay, one more book and then we're done. Along the same lines, a little bit different though, is the Book of Forgotten Witches, Dark and Twisted Folklore from Around the World. Oh my gosh. Again, another beautiful book, hardcover. It's a hardcover book. Um, and it, another gorgeous look at this the end paper I can't with the with this with the the aesthetics of these books so this is exactly what it sounds like um it is uh stories folklore from around the world um dark and twisted folklore forgotten witches um so we have curse bringers and I think we have we have conjurers is in here but it gives us a so each chapter has an introduction to the um, different, like different witches or um, dark figures, right, from around the world. And the type that they are, so here we have Mary Bateman, type trickster, area North Yorkshire, England. She lived 1768 to 1809. Mary Bateman, also known as the Yorkshire Witch, became well-known 18th century England because of her scams and deceptions. So it gives you a little, like, snippet of where, you know, their, their backstory. 
And then um, you have a, uh, a write-up about um like that has that goes into depth about this type like the type of which that we're talking about in the chapter each chapter also corresponds to a major arcana in the tarot as well as an alchemical process so it's just fascinating it is gorgeous and i cannot wait to dive into this um you know during this dark half i feel like it is the perfect read to get me in the mood in the spooky mood in the dark mood in um you know just in tapping into that dark energy dark and twisted folklore from around the world it's the book of forgotten which is amazing um so that's it that is my dive into decks for the descent as well as some books for the descent um, just to get us in the, the, the headspace of that, that darker half of the year and tapping into, like I said, that darkness, that welcome darkness, right? Some of you may not be welcoming the cold of, of fall and winter, but just for me, welcoming that dive into the darkness and connecting with that energy. And it just, it revitalizes me and it makes me so excited that that's where we're heading. So that's really what this video was about is, is connecting to that energy. So this is, um, decks for the descent. Um, I will put the hashtag in the, dis uh, in the title, in the description box. I really hope you join in. Um, if you're looking forward to sort of the darker days and the more cozier days where we can really dive into introspection and tap into that darkness, let me know. I would love to see a VR to see your choices for decks for the descent. Um, please, if you haven't done so, consider subscribing to my channel. Um, give this video a like and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.